this now. So all over the city, there's masajid that are taking down the name of the Prophet ﷺ. They're saying you can't place the name of the Prophet ﷺ next to the name of Allah because now you're comparing him to Allah. This is, this is ajeeb. This is ajeeb. Completely and utterly unacceptable. So we have to talk about the right of the Prophet ﷺ's name to be out there. And this is really happening. One of the one of our dear brethren, he went to a masjid, very close walking distance from his home, and he saw that the name of the Prophet ﷺ, which used to be there next to the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has been taken down. And he said, What happened to the plaque with the name of the Messenger ﷺ on it? They said, uh, we didn't have a place for it. We had to take it down because it was too close to the name of Allah. And so now we took that down and we put another name of Allah. Now it says, Allah, Allah. Mashiach Allah, Muhammad. He said, what did you do with the plan? He said, we didn't know what to do with it, where to put it. It's in the storage room on the floor. Hakika, I, I heard it. This is first-hand information. I, I know him well. And I know the message. He said, can I have it? They said, no, we paid money for it. He said, how much do you want for it? They thought about it and they said, give us five bucks for it. Mm -hmm. He gave them five dollars. He gave them five dollars and took the name of the Prophet He took it to his home. He built a special location for the plaque, built special lighting for it, built an entire khanqa around it, and then invited all of the fuqara and muhibbin to hold modid there. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Why did this happen? Why did they take it down? And another one of our members of our congregation, Riyadh al Jannah, he came to me and he said, You know, in this message there, they also did the same thing. They took the name of the Prophet. And I said, Here's why. If you imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in any way, shape, or form similar to the creation, you have a problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is categorically different from the khalq. He subhanahu wa ta'ala has an existence which is considered necessary existence. You and I are possible. We are not necessary. Did there not come a time upon you when you were not a thought not even mentioned? Yesterday you were not a twinkle in your mother's eye. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you from nothing. You were not always existing. You had a beginning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no beginning. You have an end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us your sequence. كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ ثُمَّ يُمِيتُكُمْ ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَمُ Isn't that your process? How should you disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you were deceased, you were dead? Then He brought you to life. Then He will cause you to die. Then he will resurrect you, and then to him you will return. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not live and die like you and I. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no end. He is qadim and he is baqi. He is pre-eternal and he is eternal. Bukhalifun lil hawadis. He is categorically distinct from all created things. Yani, he is not that way or that way. He is not in a direction in relation to things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond direction. Allah does not occupy space and time. Allah created space and time. These are things you should know. He subhanahu wa ta'ala is self-subsisting. Existing by his own will. Existing by himself. Not needing anything other than him. Whilst everything other than him subhanahu wa ta'ala needs him to exist. If it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would not be here. There would be nothing. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala is one in His that, in His sifat, in His af'al. Which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a glorified perfect man. Listen carefully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a perfect man. But we have Muslims today who have become delusional. 
They imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be some kind of perfect man up that way sitting on a chair being carried by malaika. <coughs> Subhanallah. Now here's the problem. If you imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be that, then what do you do with the actual perfect man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Are you all understanding me? Yeah. If you imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a perfect man, then what do you do with the actual perfect man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? There has become the comparison now between Allah and His Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is completely madness. This is absurd. How could you do such a thing? And so, as a reaction to that, they spend their night and day to try to diminish the Prophet Allah is somehow a perfect man. The Prophet we have to talk about his imperfection only as a matter of Tawheed. Don't call upon him. Don't say, Ya Muhammad. Don't say, Ya Rasulullah. Don't call upon him. Don't imagine him to be alive. He's dead. He's dead. He was just a man, just a human being, just like you and me. Subhanallah. Where is this coming from? I said, it's because he's occupying the same level as my God. He's becoming better, in your description, better than what I imagine Allah to be. This is a musibah. It's a complete disaster. So to protect their own aqidah, they have to diminish the Prophet ﷺ. But it doesn't stop there. A fitna of this kind, it perpetuates itself. If the Prophet ﷺ is dead and you can't call upon him and he can't benefit you, he can't benefit you, he can't benefit you. If that's the case with him ﷺ, then what do you do with Ahlul Bayt? You have to lower them even further, isn't it? You have to make even less of them. Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Ali Karamallahu Wajha, Fatima, Aisha, Kurba. You have to diminish them, isn't it? To protect now what you believe to be the Qa'id of the believers, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they have to be less than him. MashaAllah. And if that's the case with the Ahlul Bayt, what about the Sahaba that one Allah Ali? Ah, sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. They're insignificant. They're men and we're men. They, their time came and went, they did what they could. If you pray hard enough, you know, you're going to be just like them. It's no problem. You can reach them. It's no problem. Ajeeb. And now, if that's the case with the Sahaba and Ahl al-Bayt, what do we do with Abdul Qadir Jilani? He has to be beneath everybody. Now he has to be completely nothing, isn't it? You have no place of rank for him. There's no recognition of him with one Allah Ta'ala. We're all the same. We're all the same. Everything is flat now. All people are equal. Either you're Jannati or Jahannami Fakat. Then your actions is the only way to distinguish between the two. All of this is wrong. All of this is wrong. The first fitna is you erred in the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by comparing him to his creation. This is number one. This is number one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is categorically beyond the creation. There is nothing about him subhanahu wa ta'ala that resembles the muhdith, muhdathat. These things that he subhanahu wa ta'ala has originated himself into existence. He is not to be compared with anything in the khalq. Subhanallah. Amma This ayah is an indication to every mushrik and every disbeliever and everyone who errs in the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their recognition. Allah is beyond what you imagine. Allah is not some kind of perfect man. Allah is the absolute being subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-fardu samad alladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad. Wa lam yakun lahu kufu wa ahad. There is nothing like unto him. Nothing. Wadih or not wadih? Clear or not clear? Clear. Good. We're building a case. It's a matter of education, inshallah. Yeah. Then after that, there is an actual perfect man. Sallu alayhi, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. There is an actual perfect man. Yes, he was perfect in every regard, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi. Perfect.
perfect in his speech, perfect in his action, perfect in his judgment. He was completely faultless. He was completely faultless. Masoor. Protected even from making mistakes, sallallahu alayhi wa His knowledge, mashallah. He said, I am the one who knows Allah best among you. A'lamukum billah. There was no star nor realm that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did not pass. There's no malaika that, that he did not go beyond. There's no rank except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to him. And our job as believers is to revere him, love him, be dedicated to him, be attached to him for the rest of our lives and even beyond death. And to seek his companionship sallallahu alayhi wa sallam infinitely in general. We have to speak about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to restore our recognition of him. You can't diminish him with your words. Nobody, no matter how much you diminish him, you say about him and you disregard him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his malaika are constantly sending salat upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He doesn't need your salat. You cannot diminish him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It can't happen. Impossible. Allah will not happen. No matter how many times you bring down his name, you bring down his name in the masajid that he built for you. He taught you how to build. He taught you how to establish. You stand on his member sallallahu alayhi wa and diminish him. You cannot erase his name from the arsh. It's written on the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sallallahu alayhi wa name is written upon the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to give you the name. <laughs> now, these are formalities. Huh? We have to give you the name. This is in the riwayah of Imam al-Bayhaqi rahimahullah fi al-Dala'i wa al-Hakim rahimahullah wa sahahahu al-Hakim radiallahu anhu. Sahih in al-Hakim radiallahu anhu. This hadith. An Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لما اقترف آدم الخطيئة from عمر الخطاب الفاروق رضي الله عنه he said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said when Adam عليه السلام acquired the error you see the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم speaks in a very beautiful manner yeah? about our father Adam عليه وعلى نبينا السلام لما اقترف he said when he acquired the mistake yeah? he says قال آدم عليه السلام سر يا ربي أسألك بحق محمد آدم عليه السلام سر oh Allah I ask you by the right of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم لما غفرت لي that you should forgive me I did something I seek forgiveness I seek by the right of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال الله الله سبحانه وتعالى says يا آدم كيف عرفت محمدا ولم أخلقه الله الله آدم how did you know محمد I haven't created him yet I haven't formed him yet okay how did you know I didn't form him yet how did you know about him listen carefully to what آدم عليه السلام said يا ابن آدم، listen to what your father said. قال لأنك يا ربي، because when you, oh Allah, oh my Lord، لما خلقتني بيدك، when you formed me، when you created me with your yad، ونفخت في من روحي، and you blew into me from your روح، رفعت رأسي، I raised my head. are you are you noticing this is the first thing that a human being did. سبحان الله. This is the first thing that the human being, your species, begins with Adam alayhi salam. This is the very first thing that Adam alayhi salam did. And I'm going to tell you the very first thing that Adam alayhi salam, the first human being, had come to know as a point of ilm. He said, I raised my head. فَرَأَيْتُ عَلَىٰ قَوَائِمِ الْعَرْشِ مَكْتُوبًا 
La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah I raised my head and I saw written upon the pillars of your throne First thing that his eyes fell upon There is no God but Allah Muhammad is the messenger of Allah This is how it was written This is how it was written Lima. He alayhi wa alayhi wa salam continues He says to. So that I came to know. So this is the first thing that Adam alayhi salam came to know. The very first thing that the Adamic species had come to know. I have come to know that you, O oh Allah, لم تضف إلى اسمك إلا أحب الخلق إليك. I know that you did not put next to your name except the name of the one who you love most out of the entire creation. This is the first thing a human being came to know. It's nothing to scoff at. It is the very first thing Basha came to know and realize. Is what? The rank of the Prophet I knew instantly, he said. I knew that you didn't put next to your name except the name of the one you love more than every other creation of yours. فَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now we're waiting for the confirmation or rejection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the criteria. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى صَدَقْتَ يَا آدَمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You've spoken the truth, O oh Adam. This is number one. You've spoken the truth, Ya yeah, Adam. Like, إِنَّهُ لَأَحَبُّ الْخَلْقِ إِلَيَّ He is surely the most beloved of the creation to me. Number two. وَإِذْ سَأَلْتَنِي بِحَقِّهِ قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لَكِ And if you had asked me, if you're asking me by his right, I forgave you. I forgave you. غَفَرْتُ لَكِ Done. And if it wasn't for Muhammad, I would not have created you. If it were not for Muhammad, I would not have created you. I'm not making this up. I didn't write this into the history of hadith. It's Hakiba. Ask him about Bayhaqi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Adam alayhi salam, and if it wasn't from Muhammad, awalan, you said the truth, yes. I didn't put next to my name, except the name of one who I love more than everybody else. That's number one. Number two, I do love him more than everybody else. Everything else. Number three, if you're asking me by his haq, why don't we all do this and ask by the haq of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Ask by the right of the Prophet If it served Adam السلام, before the Prophet السلام, was even created, it's not going to serve you today. <laughs> and if you ask me by his haq, I forgive. It's done. And finally and critically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds something to the affair. Allah could have stopped here and said, okay, these are the things that we discussed, these are the answers. But like Allah added something. That in fact, if it wasn't for Muhammad, I wouldn't make you in the first place. So you are created only because of Muhammad Because the creation has a seven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not questioned regarding what he subhanahu wa ta'ala does. But they are they are questioned. Everybody else is questioned. You can't negotiate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did you make it so, ya Allah? Allah chose. Allah khutara. Allah khutara. Allah chose. This is the rank of the Prophet So if his name is written next to the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the divine throne, ma <clears> ma <throat> What's the matter with some people? That they think, they, they think this is too high for the Prophet Or that they want to separate the name of the Prophet from his habib. Allah loves him. Allah wants his name to be with his name. 
Allah made it so as a, as a matter of honor to the Prophet ﷺ and a matter of favor from Allah to the Prophet ﷺ. Now you want to come between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His favor for His beloved? His honoring of His mahkub? We have a case. رَوَى الْإِمَامُ الطَّبَرَانِ وَابْنُ حِبَّارَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ Both of them have narrated. عَنْ أَبِي سَعِيدٍ الْخُدْرِي رَضِي اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أتاني جبريل إمام الطبراني and Ibn Hibban both of them narrate this uh, narration عن أبي سعيد الخضري رضي الله عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said جبريل عليه السلام came to me أتاني جبريل عليه السلام فقال إن ربي وربك إن ربي وربك يقول My Lord and your Lord says to you يا محمد إن ربي وربك يقول لك Allah is asking you a question, Ya Rasulullah. Do you know how I have raised for you your mention? This is Sunan. Where does this come from? A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa rafa'na alaka. And we have surely raised for you your mention. Your dhikr. Your remembrance. We have raised it for you. So Jibreel is sent down to Habib وسلم, to ask him, Ya Rasulullah, Allah says to you, Do you know how I raised your dhikr for you? So I. Habib وسلم, says, Allah knows best. Qal Jibreel alayhi salam says, Yaqul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ida dhukirtu dhukirta ma'i. If I am mentioned, you are mentioned with me. Ma'i, with me. If I am mentioned, you are mentioned with me. This is how I raise for you your mention. <coughs> قال الإمام الشافعي رحمه الله معنى قول الله تعالى إمام الشافعي has specific تفسير regarding the verse of the Quran ورفعنا لك ذكرك he says لا أذكى يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى as if Allah is saying I am not mentioned except that you were mentioned with me لا أذكر حتى تذكر معي لا أذكر إلا ذكرت معي I am not mentioned except that you are mentioned with me. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And today, people want to take down the name of the Prophet because it's too close to the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is flying in the face, not of the sunnah of the Prophet This is flying in the face of the sunnah of Allah. This is going against the sunnah of Allah. He put the name of Habib Sallallahu next to his So failure to recognize the rank of the Prophet Sallallahu is what gives rise to these things. The people want to diminish the Prophet Sallallahu But the fact of the matter is, the purpose, while we were created, as Allah indicates to Adam Alayhi Salaam, is to recognize the rank of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. You think, ah, oh, Imam Sahib, no, this is too much now. No, people don't want to accept this. But I think we have justification. We have justification when it comes to Now, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala alayhi. Now, Allahu Akbar. In this hadith, which people are busy constantly trying to diminish its authenticity, well, like in every ma'na in it, is sound. And it was mentioned by Ibn al-Jawzi, Min Tariq Yahya al-Basri, among others. It's a long hadith, well, like we're going to summarize. It's a fascinating story, and people absolutely have to know. Muslims should know this. Muslims should know this. It's a matter of faith, a matter of belief. This hadith is up from Salman al-Farisi, the one Allah ta'ala alayhi. He said, حضرت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم I came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم on a given day فإذا 
أنا أرى إذا أنا بعربي جاف راجل بدوي. While I was with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I see this Arab man, Bedouin, dry, desert rider, Bedouin man. And if you know the Bedouins and the way they live, they are very particularly hard people. Because the desert, the desert is an unforgiving place, and their disposition is very hard. The words are harsh. They're very hard people. So Salman Farsi radiallahu anhu is saying, I saw such a man coming to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the man said salam to us, we responded to the salam. Then the man said, Ayyukum Muhammad Rasulullah. Which one of you is Muhammad Rasulullah? Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ana, 